this is the part of the uh, the series where we kind of flip it back on you and really want you to start really engaging and thinking about what we're talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of have like a little sim simulation scenario here where we're going to uh, break out into small groups and um, act as if we're in some one of our emergency situations. So we just talked and listed a whole bunch of different possible um, types of disaster sheds that are, exist uh, across the country and even across the world. Um, and right, the idea is to kind of think of if you had uh, a shared battery, walk yourself through how that process would look. Um, and the idea is really to just brainstorm and get yourself in the shoes of thinking how to communicate with each other and how you guys are gonna collectively solve a problem together. So what's going to happen is we're going to get into a small group breakout session for 15 minutes where you'll be paired with uh, two to three different people in a group. And it's just like the battery collective scenario, like, okay, we just learned that there are two people or two families are out there without power. And then you have to decide with your small group, like, what is a scenario that's no, no power? What do they actually need? Now, how do we um, get the power to them. They need a battery and you happen to have this community shared battery. Let's brainstorm a potential pathway forward. And we have 15 minutes to figure this out. It's like a little communication game, a little game here. And just remember like uh, in a battery collective, your voice matters, your ideas matter. Uh, and it's you know about the power to illuminate your community's resilience. So uh, think about what your community specifically has, its strengths and maybe even weaknesses and try to problem solve. So in order to get there, you have to think about what's a scenario, what's a situation, what are the barriers? What are some things you have to overcome? And just notice how the group conversation goes. Distance between groups, all of that, let's decide in your group, like try to figure it out together. It's a simulation. And I'm really curious, just trying to get some feedback on what everyone ran into. Um, typically, like in group dynamics, especially if there's small groups sometimes, even if there's big groups, but there'll be vocal people and people that are not so vocal. So if you were vocal in your, your breakout room, um, thank you. If you were not vocal in your, your breakout room, I'm really curious about your thoughts. I'm curious about everyone's thoughts, but I would like to start with the individuals who are not as vocal in the breakout groups. Because um, sometimes when we talk, we don't hear very well. So the individuals that weren't speaking very much sometimes can provide different insight. Um, just curious about what you guys came up with. What was your situation that you ran into? Your emergency. For the most part, our group um, was able to kind of think about like what are the tools that we have each of ourselves at our disposal, and then what are some additional ways that we could try and prioritize or um, triage to try and meet a lot of the needs that um, the scenario offered. Um, so one of the things that we thought of was kind of factoring in like what the additional needs were as far as like medical needs, communications, whether any one of the two separate groups might need um, some sort of transportation or something like that and trying to prioritize in different ways along those lines. And then what was also brought up was um, a couple of our group members have access to uh, industrial, like a hundred foot long, I believe, um, power cords. An additional thought that we had was thinking about whether we have a means of charging multiple locations at the same time without having to move the batteries too much. Um, and, you know, how we might be able to kind of shift power from one location to another or think about what additional tools at our disposal um, could be used to preserve the function of the different uh, things that we need. So like a refrigerator, 
you charge that refrigerator. If you have ice packs, you can keep that refrigerator cooler longer or cool down other refrigerators without needing to provide power to those refrigerators. Um, so things like that are what we thought about. Thank you for sharing. Uh, group two, uh, what was your emergency and how did you guys deal with it? So for group two, I'll, and I'll drop it in the chat too, because I had it all typed up. Uh, we had a heat disaster situation. So we kind of um, tried to think through and be really flexible, I guess. Um, and so we, were, we wanted to assess the situation, establish if there were other power resources in the region, if it was really wide, wide, widespread, like sometimes the church might have a, a, a backup as well, um, get communications with the groups in need. Um, so whether that's uh, directly calling them or having someone go over there and check out and make sure everyone's okay. Um, it would probably be a good idea to set up a central hub for multiple people if they can move, if that's possible in, in whatever situation you're in. Um, you can assess if somebody needs on-site care to triage something really big, but recognize that resource is now out of play or for multiple people. So just kind of being strategic about what's going on and the widespreadness and making decisions. Um, you can put out some social media blasts to those who can see it to broadcast your need to try to get some more support or resources in the rest of your communi community. And then also making sure that our own resources are charged and ready for an emergency. So this was all under the assumption that like our own phones are at full and all that. That's what we did. Mm, thank you. Uh, group three, what was your emergency? We didn't really come up with a particular emergency. It was just like a power outage. Okay, power outage. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna move to group four. What was your emergency? It was just a general power outage. Okay. And then group five? Also a general power outage. And group six? We may have been group six and it was just general power outage. Okay, how about seven? General power outage. Okay, and how about group eight? We talked about um, supporting elders in our community. So both New Orleans, um, like after hurricanes and then also Chicago in terms of high rises. So both up high and down low. Nice, thank you for that. Um, so with that, I mean, I'd, I'd like to actually just make a couple of comments uh, before passing it to Crystal. So um, one of the things is I saw that there were a lot of like general power outages. The majority of them are throughout this course. We are focused around a battery and I'll, I'll probably continue to say this just to kind of break the mentality that we're here to talk about a battery. Um, but think about those uh, social uh, emergencies that are out there as well. I did see on the map that a few people put down some social issues. Um, social issues are emergencies. Um, and those social issues can also uh, stimulate the activation of community um, and community projects and community resources. Um, someone talked about a refrigerator and it's insightful to have ice in your refrigerator, you know, so the, the um, temperature can stay low for longer to preserve the food that's in there, even after the refrigerator is unplugged from the wall. It can be as equally powerful if you have one refrigerator and you have five people using that one refrigerator. So definitely I'm going to try to reinforce thinking outside of the box. So if you have five households and they have five refrigerators, you can take the non-essential items out of the refrigerator, say, hey, we can actually power one refrigerator. Let's all put our stuff in Williams or Tina's refrigerator. Um, just kind of in that same realm of the ice to think outside of the box, think out, literally think outside of the ice box. Um, so we'll go more over that and I don't want to crunch time. So just a couple of uh, food for thought there. So I do appreciate everyone's participation in the exercise.